quickly, just give us a round of what the status or the state of the oil and gas industry is like in Africa at the moment. Thank you so much for having me. The state of the oil and gas industry in Africa is currently strong. They, it has picked up from uh, a slump that we saw in 2014 with the market crash of the oil prices. But the prices have, bec have gone a little bit up. You've seen uh, there's, a lot of, there's still a lot of vol um, volatility in the market, but the prices are, are stabilizing. And you've seen a lot of um, oil and gas action happening around Africa. So, for example, you could look at South Sudan, the, the only East African nation that produces oil. They have started to rebuild their fields and they're getting new production coming up. Kenya is going to be having oil and gas. And so first all, we expecting first oil very soon. Nigeria is picking back up. Angola is going to be having something really, really beautiful. President is going to be hosting a big conference on oil and gas, which is going to be the first in, the main, in, uh, in almost three years. And they'll be out there and putting out a lot of new reforms. So the state is it's very strong, and we are closely linked to a lot of oil and gas activity. So I'm so proud to be an African at this time, and I'm so proud to be part of this industry. Are you, uh, I did take a moment to read through the book, and of course, when you look at chapter one, it does say that it's high time for African oil and gas fuel to better the future of Africans. Why has it taken long for African con con countries to actually leverage this? That is, that is the question which we all have to answer, and it has, it has, it has been mm -hmm. very bad in the past because of how we have managed the oil industry and how we've really engaged. The issue, we, um, one of the prime issues had been governance. We have not managed our resources well. So you start by saying we made mistakes, but the past is reference, not residence. So we are going to start moving forward. It's a new generation of Africans today really looking at how oil and gas has been managed in the past. Today, we have to start looking at how do we train young people, get young people involved in oil and gas, but also manage those resources well and create more jobs for our people. For example, create contracts, create opportunities, local content. To, to your question, you said, yes, it has not really been as it has, um, in the past as uh, what we all expect, but it's a big issue that we all have to challenge ourselves, and that's what we're writing on the book, and that's why this book is going to be really amazing, by the way. Bec um, it's the issue of women. Mm. We, have, we, we still have to explain how every day, every night, in all or majority of the oil companies or the oil industry, you still have women under 2% or 3% of that industry when it comes to management. That in a new Africa, which is changing, we have to start addressing those issues because these are African resources and we have to empower them. But also commit to working strong with the companies that invest. So because, you know, there's one thing we, we, you, you, you mentioned right before this broadcast about Tanzania. We have to continue promoting that. We have to continue encouraging these new industries, new gas, and encouraging the investors as well because you cannot love jobs and hate those who create jobs. So we have to find a balance but really driving Africa forward and making sure that these resources work for Africans and everyday people who just need jobs and they need an opportunity. There is one thing that's talking about uh, the future of uh, Africans, of course, on the back of the oil and gas sector. But what are the countries doing to make this a reality, Ayuk? There's been a lot of progress in Africa when it comes in, to making it a reality. I'll give you an example. Tanzania is moving a lot mm. with local content and gas monetization. Nigeria, which sometimes people have complained a lot about its progress in the sector, has one of the best local content regulations, and it has empowered a lot of local participants and you, have, you could see a lot of companies coming out of Nigeria where they're actually operating. Equatorial Guinea has done very well with gas monetization. They just signed a big deal, $350 million, where you're going to have a lot of gas taken from some of the new fields into a current existing LNG plant. You've seen a great initiative um, that is out there, LNG to Africa, where they're going to take gas and move it all around Africa to to see how we can use African gas to power Africa. That's a really beautiful program, and I'm really proud of our law from being part of it and supporting it. But also, you, could, you also have to look at new exploration dynamics that are happening around the continent, which mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really fertile. I see today in Johannesburg, um, South Africa, South Africa just had a big oil fine with, with, um, and gas fine with Total, 
which is really going to shape the country's history when it comes to oil and gas. So there are some good things that are happening, but we, we, we cannot let up. We have a lot of work to do. We have to also hold ourselves accountable. We have to ask the tough questions, and we have to really get our, uh, ourselves up and do, and, do, and, and, and do the job. We are not going to wait for other people to come from outside to do it for us. We have to start um, pulling our socks up. We have to pull up our bootstraps, and we have to get to work. It's time for us to really get to work and not blame it on others. Before I let you go, we're looking at 2025. The oil demand is expected to go up, up to at least 57% a rise there in the demand. Do you believe that we will have enough supply to meet the demand? There is going to be enough supply to meet the demand in 2025. Here's the beautiful thing. From where? There's, there, the, you, from around Africa, places where you never thought you could find oil, you're finding oil. Kenya. You, they've had discoveries. There's a lot more discoveries to be found. Africa is so beautiful when it comes to natural resources because we have been the most underexplored and, un, and, and underproduced. But we have to do something that is, that is really essential at this moment. We have to encourage investment. We have to encourage um, exploration. We have to create an environment. So being able to deal with issues like transparency, um, management of resources, and also providing the right kind of incentives for people to put money. And not just the right kind of incentive for foreign companies, but also Africans to really invest in Africa to drive it from small businesses to anything. So we are going to meet the energy demand, but we have to also be careful about one thing, security. Ensuring right. that we have secure infrastructures, keeping human and social security there is going to make a lot. So we are going to see a lot of progress. But also, before, um, um, before, be, before we end this conversation, we should also start embracing mm. about the energy transition. And we start looking at how we can look right. at other sources of energy because it's going to be very important. And Africa can compete with that right now because we can have an edge on the technology and we can compete with our European and American mm -hmm. counterparts. And this young generation of Africans can actually do it. We just need to give them the chance to play and they will play really well in that right. field. Ayuk, thank you so much for joining us, CNBC, this afternoon.